Hi students, it's Shana from EspressoEnglish.net and I hope you're ready to learn some awesome new words today. One of the most common problems I hear among students who are already at an intermediate level of English and who want to become more fluent is that they really want to have a rich vocabulary. You don't just want to use the same basic words over and over. Instead, you want to use interesting and powerful words. So today I'll teach you 20 colorful verbs that will supercharge your vocabulary. And that's actually a good example. I could say improve your vocabulary or expand your vocabulary, but the word supercharge is so much more descriptive. It creates a mental picture of getting a huge boost in vocabulary power. If you like this lesson, then you'll probably love level two of my vocabulary builder course, which will teach you more than a thousand words that will really enrich your vocabulary. Click on the link in the video description for more information and a free sample lesson. Okay, let's get started. For each powerful verb, I'll tell you what it means and give you a few examples. Blab. To blab has a couple meanings. It can mean simply to talk carelessly and without thinking, or it can mean to reveal something secret by talking carelessly. Let's say you're separating from your husband or wife and you want to keep the details private. You'd be annoyed if your soon-to-be ex-husband or ex-wife blabbed about the situation on social media, meaning they're talking carelessly and revealing secret or private information. Or maybe there's a company developing a new technology and one of its employees blabs to the media. They reveal some secrets by talking without using caution. Clutch. To clutch means to hold something very tightly. Let's say I hate roller coasters. Well then, if I go on one, I would clutch the bar. I'd hold it very tightly because I'm scared. Cower. Speaking of fear, the word cower means to shrink back and hesitate because of fear. This can be a physical action, like if a little child sees a big dog, he might cower by moving his body away and making it smaller. To cower is body language that expresses fear. Or cower can mean something more like letting fear control you and failing to take action because you're afraid. Maybe you're working for a cause, you're trying to get a law changed in your country, but there's a lot of opposition and resistance and obstacles. You could say, we won't cower in the face of adversity, meaning that even though people are against you, you refuse to let fear control you and stop your action. Crave. To crave means to have an intense desire for something. We often use this for food. So on a hot day, I might crave some ice cream. I really want it. But it can be used for strongly desiring other things too. Maybe you crave your boss's approval or your kids crave your attention. Devour. Devour means to eat something quickly and greedily with a lot of desire. So if I was craving ice cream and then I get some ice cream, I'd probably devour it. You'll also sometimes see this verb used for consuming or reading a book very quickly. So, I devoured the novel means I read it very quickly because it was so good. Embrace. Embrace is another word for hug, so the physical action of putting your arms around someone. But it can be also used to mean fully accepting and welcoming an idea, a cause, a philosophy, and so on. You could say, our company embraces diversity, means you welcome people and ideas from different backgrounds. Eradicate. To eradicate means to completely eliminate something, destroy it or get rid of it completely. If your home is infested with insects, you'd want to call an exterminator to eradicate the insects. Some diseases that were very common in the past have been eradicated by vaccines. I hope someday we can eradicate poverty in the world so nobody will be poor anymore. 
fling. If you fling something, it means you throw it, often with a free and kind of uncontrolled motion. You might fling some dirty clothes into the laundry basket or fling some coins into a fountain. Maybe your young children are fighting and one of them flings a toy at his brother. He throws it freely and forcefully. Gaze. Gaze means to look in a steady and thoughtful way, often with wonder and admiration. People often gaze at a beautiful landscape or gaze at the stars in the sky. Or you might gaze at your boyfriend or girlfriend, admiring how great they look. Gravitate. To gravitate means to move toward someone or something or be attracted to that thing, like it's pulling you with some kind of power. If you love science, you might gravitate towards science fiction movies, so you tend to watch them instead of other types of movies. People would gravitate towards a leader who is very charming. They move toward him and they go along with him because they're attracted to him. Groan. To groan is to make a sound of pain or annoyance, like, ugh. An old man might groan when getting up out of a chair because his joints ache, so he groans with discomfort or pain. Or your teenage daughter might groan when you tell her to get off her phone and clean her room. In this case, she's expressing annoyance because she doesn't like your request. Mimic. To mimic means to imitate in appearance or behavior. Some animals or insects mimic things in nature, like a chameleon changes color to mimic its surroundings. If you're learning a dance or a martial art, you would try to mimic your teacher's movements to imitate or copy them. Pinpoint. To pinpoint means to identify, usually not identifying a person, but rather a problem or a reason or another piece of information. Let's say you're having back pain. Well, your doctor would try to pinpoint exactly which nerve in your back is causing the pain. Revitalize. Revitalize means to bring in new life and new energy. When the economy isn't growing, the government might take action to try to revitalize it. Or maybe you have a city that is kind of boring, but then a new cultural center revitalizes the city center. It adds new energy and movement and life. Screech. A screech is a high-pitched sound that's usually not pleasant to hear. It can be made by a person, like a baby might screech if you take away its toy. Or it can be made by a thing, like if a car or train needs to stop very suddenly in an emergency, it might screech as the wheels rub against the road or track. Scrutinize. To scrutinize means to examine or inspect something very carefully, often looking for any mistakes or flaws. The workers at an important newspaper would scrutinize articles before publishing them to make sure there are no typos, grammar mistakes, or errors in facts. Slam. Slam refers to a violent action with impact, like closing a door very forcefully, or maybe slamming a book on a table if you're angry. In sports like hockey and American football, the players often slam into each other. There's also a slang meaning. To slam something or someone means to criticize it very harshly. Let's say there's a comedian who likes to tell racist jokes. People might slam that comedian, meaning saying extremely strong negative things to him and about him because they hate those types of jokes. Soar. Soar means to fly high in the air. We might talk about a bird like an eagle soaring in the sky. Soar can also mean to increase or improve suddenly, like how sales of face masks soared during coronavirus. There was a huge and sudden increase in sales. And saying that your heart or spirit is soaring means that you're feeling super great, almost like you're flying. Treasure. 
You might know the word treasure as a noun, but it can also be a verb, meaning to keep something precious and value it very highly. It might not be something valuable in terms of money, but it's very valuable and special to you. Like you might treasure a blanket that your grandmother made for you. Many parents say they treasure the time spent with their kids. It's something precious and dear to you. You treasure it. Yank. The verb yank means to pull something with a sudden and strong motion. If your car door is stuck, you might yank it to try to get it open. If your child is wandering too close to a campfire, you might yank them back, pull them quickly to get them away from the danger. There you go. Now you know 20 powerful verbs. And I actually have a quiz to help you practice and review them. Just click on the link in the video description to go try that quiz. Practicing is so, so important because it helps you really remember the vocabulary better. That's why every lesson inside my Vocabulary Builder courses includes a quiz and some short answer questions to help you use these new words yourself. Come join the courses if you'd like to level up your vocabulary even more. That's all for today. Please let me know if you enjoyed this lesson. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.